Here are 16 YouTube settings that every small YouTuber absolutely needs to change if you're looking to grow on YouTube, get more views and actually make it. This first one is a feature that YouTube has just released, something that you're gonna absolutely wanna capitalize on if you're wanting to get the most views. When you're uploading a video under thumbnail, you now have the option to click test and compare. This gives us the option to upload three different thumbnails that YouTube will automatically interchange and find which thumbnail is the winning thumbnail. The winning thumbnail is the one that brings the most amount of views through click-through rate onto your video. What's even more amazing is popular creators have been doing this for a while just manually. We now have the option to do it automatically. And it's a great feature to optimize your views. In your YouTube studio, go down to settings, channel, advanced settings. Now scroll down a bit until you find disable interest-based ads. You absolutely want to have this unchecked like it is now. Once you're monetized, YouTube is going to show your audience personalized ads, meaning your revenue is going to be significantly higher. If you check this, you're going to disable that option and they won't see personalized ads hurting your overall monetization revenue. So make sure that's disabled if you're looking to make the most money on YouTube. The next setting is your audience type. Briefly and simply put, if you're not making videos directly for a child, being a nursery rhyme, Coco Melon, bedtime story, etc., you want to have this set as not made for kids. If you do have it as yes, set this channel as made for kids, you're going to be hurting your earnings, you're going to be hurting your views. So 99% of us are going to want to set this as not made for kids because we're not making content that is specifically focused for a child. Still within the same channel settings, go to feature eligibility. You're going to need to enable standard features. This should be already enabled if your channel is free of active community guideline strikes. Under intermediate features, you're going to be able to verify your phone number. This is then going to enable videos longer than 15 minutes and custom thumbnails, an absolute must to get the most views on your video. Hey, if you want to make better videos, check out the first link in the description. That's going to take you to my video assets store. Cheers. The next setting is under basic info. You can add some keywords that relate to your channel. If your channel is about gaming, you definitely want to add the keyword gaming. If your channel is about gaming and Minecraft, add Minecraft. This channel is all about content creation and making money online. So here are a couple keywords that I would use. These keywords are simply gonna help the overall discoverability of your channel and let YouTube know what your channel is about. The next feature is when you're uploading a video, go to show more and swipe down. Under license and distribution, so your license will probably say standard YouTube license. For small creators, change that to Creative Commons Attribution. What this is gonna enable is for other people to take your video, repurpose it and make a new video out of that. We all remember Andrew Tate. He essentially went viral from people taking his podcast clippings and turning them into shorts. This is essentially what this is doing. And for small creators, this is a great opportunity because if someone is able to get more views on your video, they're doing something different. Maybe they're adding a caption, maybe they're adding some effects, they have a different editing style. And it's a great opportunity for you to learn, especially when there isn't too much on the line. So go ahead and change that to Creative Commons Attribution and that'll enable people to reuse your video. When you're uploading a video that is different to your regular niche, make sure that publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers is off. Let's say you've built an editing audience. They're not gonna wanna watch your car video that you just posted to test to see how it does. More so, if your editing audience isn't interacting or engaging with your video, they're watching it for 10 seconds, that video is gonna send negative signals to the algorithm saying, this is not a good piece of content, let's not boost it out. We want the most amount of car enthusiasts to watch our video as opposed to our editing audience. So make sure this is off if you're posting a video that is different to your regular niche. When you're uploading a short to your YouTube channel, under video elements, you can add a related video. If I click add, and let's say this video is the related video, click next. When someone watches this short on YouTube, they can then directly click on the video that we've related. So if I go ahead and click that, it'll take us directly to the main video. A great feature where we can bring people who are watching our shorts over to our main videos. The next setting is optimizing your title. Now, so many people get this wrong, and it's actually so simple to do. So you can see in this video, I've titled it Audi RS3. Now, that's probably not gonna get too many views. So what we're gonna do is go to YouTube and search Audi RS3. And now we can see what the top videos under the category of Audi RS3 are. 
and more importantly, what their titles are. Changing your title based off the inspiration of some popular videos is gonna allow for more evergreen content because it's what people are searching, as opposed to a once-off view. All creators, you're gonna wanna deselect allow automatic chapters and key moments. I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube, is this block under a video where you can see what that chapter is about. If you allow automatic chapters and you don't set your own, YouTube has done it to me as well, where the chapters that it adds are just funky. It's not the right time, they've titled it wrong, and you don't want that for your video. To manually add chapters, which I would highly recommend doing, all you need to do is type a zero, colon, and zero, zero, and we can say intro. Now, if we click enter, that's gonna create a new line, and at 30 seconds, I start speaking about the first feature. Much like a book, the book's chapter title doesn't give away the entire chapter. The book's chapter acts as a piece of enticement for what is to come. Title your chapters in a way that they intrigue or entice your audience to watch that chapter, and they don't give away exactly what you're speaking about. The next setting is tags. Now this is something that is oftentimes overlooked and whereas it doesn't have a massive role in the performance of your video, it's an extra step that you're gonna to wanna to take as a small creator. So I look back on some of my early videos and realize that I just didn't or neglected to put tags. Tags help the overall discoverability and the topic of your video. Much like our channel tags, we're adding specific video tags when you upload. The next setting is when we're uploading a video, make sure your comments and ratings are enabled and on. This is gonna allow people to engage with your videos, which allows the algorithm to pick up whether or not your video is a good video leading to more views. Comments can act as a hook or confirmation that someone should keep watching your video. I'm sure we've all scrolled through the comments sometimes and seen someone talk about something that we haven't yet watched in the video. What that can sometimes do is intrigue us to keep watching that specific type of video because we're interested in what the comments said. So comments again, leave them on, leave your ratings on. I know it can be scary to get the public's opinion, but it can really and drastically increase the performance of your video. The next setting that you need to do on YouTube is adding a pinned comment. Now this kind of relates to what we were describing before, but when you click on your video, you have the option in your comment section to click on these three lines and click pin. Basically, this is gonna drag that comment all the way to the top. So it's a great way to interact with people that are commenting on your video, but also it's the first comment that people when they swipe down to your comment section are gonna see. For instance, in this one, OMG, many features that I didn't know. That is a great hook for someone who's reading that. Someone now thinks, wow, this person who isn't the creator has added a comment on their own personal agenda. Therefore, I should probably watch some more. So again, based on the previous one, it's a great hook or confirmation that someone should keep watching your video. Under layout at the bottom, you have a featured sections tab. Now this essentially impacts the way that your channel looks when someone comes across your channel. I like to put my popular videos first. That way someone can see that I've had 438,000 views on a video. If popular videos were set to the bottom, someone wouldn't be able to see that. Now, oftentimes what YouTube does was automatically is it puts your shorts videos at the top. Now, I don't really focus on shorts and it would be a pity for someone to see that my shorts are first, they have less views, they're not of the same quality as my main videos. So make sure that your featured section is exactly how you want someone to see your channel. And again, maybe consider putting your most viral videos or your biggest and most viewed videos first. Under our analytics tab in audience, we can swipe down and see when our viewers are active on YouTube. Now pretty much characterized by the darker pink line, we can see when the best time to upload is. I like to upload about two hours before on any of these days. So that would be most of my viewers are active around 6 p.m., 5 p.m. So I would upload around 3 p.m. What this is gonna enable is for the most amount of initial traction, the most amount of initial engagement on that video, as opposed to if I upload it at midnight and no one watches it for the next 12 hours. That's gonna send negative signals to the algorithm and I don't want that. So go to your analytics and see when most of your viewers are online. The next setting is also in your analytics under your audience tab. And we're gonna be looking at what your audience watches and who your audience watches. Briefly put, I know as a small creator, coming up with your next idea can be the biggest challenge. Finding inspiration, finding ideas to stay motivated, finding ideas that work and are actually gonna pull views can be challenging. So what this allows you to do is tap into what your small collection of audience is already watching. And generally put, you can see some bigger creators here. 
And under what your audience watches, you can see specific videos that have done well under your niche. So use these tools to enable inspiration for your next video. And I guarantee you that if you just take inspiration from what already works, odds are it's gonna work better than what you're already posting. So there we go. Those are 16 YouTube settings that you can change right now. And I just wanna say before we close off here, guys, I know what the grind is like. I had a vlogging channel where I posted 193 videos and only had 194 subscribers. It is brutal, it is so much work, but I promise you, if you apply what you've learned in these settings today, if you apply what you're gonna to continue to learn on YouTube, like there's a reason you click this video and that's because you're a learner and learners generally make it. So guys, with that, continue pushing, drop some words of encouragement in the description for someone who's reading and you will do it. You are gonna make it, all right? Cheers, guys.